I want to talk to you about your gallbladder and how it relates to acid reflux, a hiatal hernia, and also the connection between fasting and how your gallbladder is functioning. So let's jump into it. The statistic is that one in five adult Americans have issues with their gallbladder, so that's on average 20%. The risk is for women, unfortunately for us, it's twice the risk as men. It's not that men are immune, but we are at twice the risk if we're over 40. Also, if for either sex, if you've had, uh, you tend to eat a very high fat diet or a very low fat diet, and I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, also, if you have a low fiber diet, this encompasses most of our society, so uh, that's a risk that's uh, definitely prevalent for a lot of people. If you have insulin resistance, again, that's about 70% of our population, so, so that's common. Uh, obesity is extremely common. Overweight and obesity accounts for 70% of our population. So obviously there's a lot of people at risk for this. Also, if you've had um, hypothyroid, if you have hypothyroid, or if you have a history of having uh, a rapid weight loss, a significant amount of weight lost in a short period of time. So those are the statistics of who's at risk. And as you can see, the adult American population is, is very much uh, exhibited in that description. So what are the symptoms? Uh, people tend to feel pain in their right rib cage. It can shoot around to, to the back of their um, scapula or a, a shoulder blade and also feeling nauseous, having indigestion. Certainly by the time it's acting up, they, they start to notice that a very fatty meal makes them feel not well, nauseous, indigestion. So those are the symptoms. So let's jump into why this happens and I'm gonna to talk to you about fasting. So even during fasting, your liver is consciously, sorry, continuously making bile. So that's its job. It doesn't care whether you're eating or not, it's continuously making it. And it secretes it into the gallbladder, which is sort of the holding station for bile. But if you're not eating, uh, bile tends to concentrate more over time because it's, it's not being excreted. So while it's sort of concentrating, it's also stagnating, it's thickening. And so that can then uh, create gallbladder sludge and later on gallstones. So it's kind of like you can think of eating some fat is exercising your gallbladder. Because what happens is there's a hormone that when you eat fat, it triggers this hormone, it's called CCK, to cause the gallbladder to contract and secrete some bile. But without that stimulation to the hormone, in other words, without fat coming into your diet and stimulating that hormone to work, uh, the other thing that happens is bile flow decreases because it's kind of a, a use it or lose it type of phenomena where the brain says, oh, well, I guess no, no fat's coming in. We don't, we don't need to, you know, we don't need to secrete bile. And then th what happens is after the fast, because now the bile level has gone down, then you try to eat regularly and you, you have problems digesting fat because the, the bile level isn't up to what it should be. So it's kind of two ways this goes. One is that bile is concentrating um, while you're not eating and getting sludgy. And then the other facet of this is that the hormone is not telling your body to produce it for the, for the gallbladder to secrete bile. And then over time, your, your entire level goes down. So there's, there's two mechanisms at play here, but neither one of them is normal, which is the point I wanna make. Um, so when the bile isn't released efficiently, the other thing that can happen is, as it's sort of concentrating and stagnating, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, it can reflux back up into the stomach, uh, which is the wrong direction. It's supposed to go into the small intestine. It's not supposed to reflux, reflux back into the stomach. But that causes you to feel bloating, nausea, increased upper abdominal pressure, and that leads to uh, slow digestion and uh, what occurs is that that increased pressure as we know if you follow the channel at all um, leads to 
that pressure on the stomach leads to acid reflux and, and also hiatal hernia. So that's how the gallbladder and the stomach and reflux and hiatal hernia are all related. It's this pressure system and so much of how our body works, most especially our digestive tract, has to do with pressure. So, you know, we eat and we swallow and there's a, there's a pressure to push that food and drink down into the stomach then there's, there's a pressure to keep it there. And that comes from your sphincter or valve at the lower part of your esophagus. Then there's a pressure to push, once the stomach has churned around your food and digested it to a degree, then there's a pressure to push it, push that contents out of the stomach into your small intestine. Now the bile is supposed to join those contents after it's left the stomach into that upper small intestine to now take that really acidic uh, contents into a more alkaline um, pH because bile is very alkaline. So there's that pressure, okay, leaving the stomach, don't come back in, you're, you're, we're done with you, you know? And so it's this pressure from top down is really the way to think about it. But these pressures can, can get askew from various activities that, that we do and, and dietary changes. And, and one that I want to talk about is, is fasting. So we're not having that gallbladder exercised. It's, it's not allowed to, to do what it should do on a regular enough basis. And the window tends to be fasting more than 12 to 14 hours. So it's 14 and a half, 15, probably not the end of the world, but people who go into many days long fast, if they, uh, they regularly fast 16 to 20 hours, there's a lot of schools of thought about that. Um, not to mention the fact it's really hard to get enough protein and calories in, in a, in a short window. Now, some people say, no, I do it just fine. Okay. So then we're not going to worry about you on that. But what we are going to worry about is that, that, that special window of 12 to 14 hours, once we breach that, then our gall, gallbladder starts to act abnormally because we're not, we're not triggering it with fat. Now, not bad fat. There's a lot of good fat that we need in our diet, you know, to make cholesterol and to make hormones, but it needs to come in after that 12 to 14 hour mark uh, to keep that gallbladder healthy. Now, what if you're a man? What if you're in your 20s? What, what if, what if, what if? I'm not saying there aren't people that seem to get away with this, but as time passes, you know, how long is it going to take your body to do this to yourself before the gallbladder starts really acting up? It, you know, it would vary from person to person. I gave you the list earlier of the people that are at, at higher risk. Uh, so if you're at lower risk, it would take longer, maybe never. But it is a risk profile. And Dr. Walter Longo, who wrote um, the fasting mimicking diet, and uh, he's all about longevity, highly respected researcher and has been for many, many decades. He, decades ago, cited this, don't go beyond the 14 hours, your gallbladder is going to feel the effects. So this knowledge has been around for quite some time, but in, on this channel, we really specialize in gut health, digestion, talk a lot about acid reflux, talk a lot about hiatal hernia, and acid reflux and hiatal hernia are really really go together. The more research we become aware of, and as we work with so many patients, we see that this is kind of a concurrent effect. When you're having regular acid reflux, the percentage is 70 to 100% of the time you, you have a hiatal hernia. Probably small, but that doesn't matter. It's, it's problematic to have one. Okay, so what else did I want to tell you? Um, also, when you have poor bile flow, it leads to fat malabsorption. And I was just talking to you about these, these pressures and these valves that hold everything, you know, keep, keep the pressure going in the right direction. Well, when you have fat malabsorption, you're malabsorbing uh, vitamin A and D particularly, and, and they, those two vitamins have a lot to do with keeping those sphincters or those valves functioning. So also with fat malabsorption, you get gut inflammation, you get dysbiosis, which is uh, inappropriate bacteria, more bad bacteria in your colon than 
than good. And what happens to that is then you get that increased gas production, you get that increased intra-abdominal pressure, and off we go to acid reflux and hiatal hernia land, okay? So that's how that all that's how that all interacts. So the key here that I'm trying to uh, bring up is that we, we fasting, I love fasting, overnight fasting, and I love that 12 to 14 hour window. And as I said, if 14 goes to 15, that's not the end of the world. And it's, it's very important for the body to get a break from eating. And, and that is a nice window, 12 to 14 hours, where the body cleans cleans house and the immune cells come out and you know they just need a break from digesting food all day long you know so this foraging type of thing that many people do and then they're snacking right before they go to sleep and the first the second they get up they're eating again you know that could just be seven or eight hours and we're really going for almost double that right 12 to 14. Um, so it, it is important to take a break from eating I'm a big proponent of that but um, there are individuals who are suffering from gallbladder issues needlessly if they knew about this. Of course, you know, there's a healthy diet and not bad fats and not fast food. You know, all of that is part of it as well. But what we really need to understand is that, that the gallbladder is intimately related to what the rest of your gut is doing, especially this pressure. Um, I've talked in previous videos about bile reflux. So not only does the bile reflux back into the stomach, it can go all the way up the esophagus and create symptoms of silent reflux. So it's, um, it's extremely important to be kind to your gallbladder. And um, I wanted to really make that association with fasting just because there's so much information out there and it sounds like it's such a great idea to fast for very long periods of time. But when it comes to your gallbladder, it really isn't. So I hope you found this information um, helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. The video uh, can really, um, we'd love you to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to increase our number of subscribers uh, because that way more people get exposed to this information and they have control of their health and they know options for their health. And that's really what my channel is all about. So uh, uh, yeah, think about subscribing and share it with a friend who maybe is suffering with this. And uh, we'll talk soon.